Hello and welcome everybody once again to the Tattoo Sisterhood Revolution virtual interview series. I'm your host, Shelley Dax, and our guest speaker today is New Zealand tattoo artist, Michaela Rose. But before we start our talk with Michaela, for those who are new on the Telesummit today, in this free event, I'm providing a safe space for people of diversity to discuss their experiences. We'll be talking about how their careers started, what kinds of obstacles they've faced, and encouraging that they give you some great advice. I, along with this unique panel of artists, hope to give encouragement and create a supportive environment for hopeful or beginning tattooers. With all of that said, let's welcome Michaela. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm just going to say a little bit about you. Michaela Rose long dreamt of creating art and traveling across the world. The last three years on her feet and on the road have taught her much about herself, the industry, and the art. In her work, Michaela focuses on creating a unique piece for each individual wearer, continually inspired by nature and having a lifelong adoration for flowers. Michaela pursued and developed a style that is distinctive and representative of her affinity for the subject matter itself. Illustrative realism is how it's been coined. Creating mood and atmosphere with her color palettes, Michaela strives to evoke an emotional connection between the wearer, the art, and her audience with the beauty of the natural world that inspires her. That sounds so amazing, Michaela. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank I know. One me. of the things I was drawn to your work because of the beautiful floral and botanical uh, designs that you have. Oh, thank you. I love creating them. It's definitely, definitely something that brings me joy. And it's nice to be able to share that with other people too. Oh, I love that. So let's just start by talking about how you became interested in a career in the tattoo industry. Well, I kind of fell into it. I didn't, uh, I didn't really plan or intend on it happening, but um, how it sort of began was one of my friends was getting a tattoo and he sort of said, oh, do you want to come along and have a look? And I was doing an arts course at the time and I was mm -hmm. interested in all sorts of different mediums. And um, I thought, well, this is pretty cool. So I went and went along and sort of watched what was happening and was quite interested in the craft and um, got talking to the guys and asked if I could come back and watch. And I was able to, and that was beautiful. So I could go back in and then kind of just see how it all went and see if it was something I was really interested in and I got to dabble in a little bit of uh, tattooing uh, of potatoes so that was a pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting little like start for me it was quite fun I've always been creative so um, wow so you craft, I, yeah. we were talking before about how um, in New Zealand there's not a ton of regulations uh, what, you know, what is it like when you want to start in the tattoo industry? What do you have to do over there to like figure that out and get into it? Well, I guess my start was pretty unconventional. I still hear a lot of, um, a lot of people, the way to kind of get in is to actually, you know, go into studios and have a portfolio of your art and your work and everything and go and talk to them and ask essentially for an apprenticeship so that uh, they can teach you and you can actually learn everything properly mm -hmm. and 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 how to do it so finding a really reputable studio and um, people whose work that you know inspires you and that you want to learn from and and doing that but yeah I, I guess a big part of it too for me is just um, because there aren't regulations with particular things I'm really passionate about people being aware of things like bloodborne pathogens <laughs> so it's really um yeah, I stress to people that that's something that they should definitely be looking at and learning about and taking courses on because it's so important in our industry. Yeah, definitely. So you said that you actually went to art school. Well, I did a, a correspondence course and it was very sort of whimsical and unconventional as well. So it wasn't particularly nice. structured, but mm -hmm. it allowed me to experience, um, you know, working with different mediums. So I got to experiment and that's kind of what allowed me to take a look into tattooing at the same time. Um, so that was really cool. So it was perfect for me. Um, I wouldn't 
<laughs> I wouldn't say maybe the particular course I did was was uh, like super uh, I <laughs> right. loads of stuff yeah necessarily it was very self-directed so you had to really motivate and push yourself to to work with that absolutely that makes sense so when you decided that this was the career that you did want to try to go into was there anything that uh, stopped you or held you back yeah, probably just myself for the main part. Um, it was very scary. <laughs> it was very scary kind of getting into it and going into it because it's such a permanent thing. And because I felt so sort of out of my depth and um, I really strive for perfection in everything that I do. So I was particularly hard on myself. But um, beyond me, uh, I had a great opportunity to be able to learn and work in a studio Um I had a yeah an opportunity where I was able to tattoo one of my friends kind of after hours and and learn with him so he gave me the beautiful gift of his legs and uh, <laughs> I <His> legs. <laughs> started sleeping one of them up and we've been a long time on it um so he yeah he wears that and um <laughs> that was really kind of him and I'm really grateful to him for that and did you uh well, how long was the, uh, whatever you would call it, like an apprenticeship or training period, I guess? How long was that for you? Yeah, um, I guess I probably, because I didn't feel very ready to tattoo kind of anyone else or anybody, especially that I didn't know um, for a long time. And so I was allowed that kind of space to be able to learn and to grow until I felt confident enough and ready enough to tattoo anybody else. <laughs> So, well, so did I, you actually have somebody, you know, looking over your shoulder and like guiding you and telling you, you know, how to use a liner, or how to use a shader? Not really. Um, mm -hmm. I had, I'd gone and bought different machines to the machines that other people that were working in the shop that I was at were using and they um, couldn't really help me with what, what I was trying to do because I had rotary. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was, it was quite unorthodox but uh they taught me a few little things about like kind of you know how to set up a station and and things like that but essentially learning to actually tattoo just came down to me practicing on my friend oh wow <laughs> yeah well how did you make yeah. that the leap though from you know like starting out and we know usually when you're starting out just using a machine it's not so great um how did you make that leap then to these gorgeous, successful, you know, botanical crystals and beautiful things that you're producing? I think time, time is a huge part of that. But also um, it was quite like starting out was quite a long period of time for me. And then I wasn't actually sure if it was something I wanted to continue with or if I was going to kind of keep going with it or where it would take me and you know, it was just sort of building confidence as well in, within myself. And then I actually got tattooed by um, another tattoo who was kind of like a mentor to me and he was really amazing. And when I got tattooed by him, um, he just really inspired me and encouraged me and kind of shared different like links with me and forums and things to look at. And I kind of just got a really big boost of inspiration and, and mm. motivation from that. And then I really delved into like kind of looking at other artists' work and, you know, figuring out what I liked about it and figuring out what I could kind of want to bring into some of my art and my work and, you know, trying to work out how people had done particular things to, you know, make it look a particular way. So, um, so I really that, just found, yeah, found inspiration from other people. And Did you, um, did you ever like take any painting classes or like foundational art classes or anything like that to like figure out the way you put your stuff is very, has beautiful color harmony too. So that's why I ask, <laughs> or is that um, just a natural gift you have? No, <laughs> no I'm just paint, like painting is one of my first memories of my first love is painting. So, um, uh, you know, even as a child, like I've just always loved painting and art and color and, and creating. And so I'm not sure. I think that's probably honestly developed naturally, but I, I never really took any specific painting classes and, or anything like that. To, Gosh, yeah, it's so good to know. <laughs> no, it's actually really remember. good to know that you can get to this kind of level of tattooing and, and, and be self-taught. 
Why are you laughing? No, your stuff is so beautiful. I um, I especially adore your little um teacup tattoo with the little baby duck in it. It's so cute. Oh, that was a favorite. That oh. was really special. That was cool. It was some beautiful memories um for my clients. So yeah, gosh, I really enjoyed a, that. Yeah. And you, you've just, I mean, the way your stuff looks is beautiful. I was even going to ask you, how did you learn to photograph your artwork? Oh, well, yeah, I'm not really <laughs> practice. Um, tr- just taking like a thousand photos. <laughs> right. I have over a hundred thousand photos on my phone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I take a lot of photos um, and and it's just really over time and seeing how other people have taken their photos that I've learned to take kind of better pictures. Um, but a lot of it's just to do with like the lighting and, and kind of trying to reduce that glare. Yeah. So yeah, there are things that you can do um, to like cut the glare out. Like you can use either like a regular camera or if you're using your phone, you can use like a, the CPL lenses, I believe mm-hmm. they're called. And yeah, you can buy like little mm-hmm. attachments. Yeah. And then like, polarizing film and take a photo that way. So it does cut out the the glare. Which yeah, is I think nice. that's, um, yeah, the glare is probably one of the biggest problems when, you know, a tattoo is fresh and it's still oozing and all that good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah just taking that shine off <laughs> right so you can actually see the tattoo and and you know try and get something that's as representative of your work as you know what it is in life so did you have support from friends and family when you got into this career yeah well I did I mean obviously um, so, the guy who gave you his legs yeah the guy who gave me his legs <laughs> wouldn't be here without him um so yeah no he's been like one of my biggest sort of um supporters in in like life anyway so him giving me his legs was massive and then you know my friends and everything yeah so my friends and everything um were huge you know hugely supportive as well and and yeah I think I'm not sure if anybody really kind of knew exactly what I was up to, but, um, you know, they just supported me anyway. And yeah. That's nice. It's um, nice to have that. Yeah. My, my family was supportive. I, I got to tattoo my dad pretty early on. So that oh. was really special. Yeah. Before I really knew what I was doing. <laughs> so that so, was neat. So what, uh, what do you think like perceive as your biggest obstacle that you that you had when you maybe the first few years you were starting out? I think just, oh, I guess just being confident in myself and like trusting in my ability to be able to create things. And um, I guess just a lot of it was working with myself and just like, you know, practicing and drawing and painting and trying to just get better at like art itself. Mm -hmm. Because that was, you know, that's a massive part of it um do you think artists yeah, learning, are, learning, learning, you know. hmm? I was gonna say do you think artists are too hard on themselves sometimes <laughs> you said you're a perfectionist oh, so. I mean yeah <laughs> yeah I think we can be and but I do think it pushes us forward to you know to get better and better and better but you, you've got to be quite careful that you you know t- are reflective and take a look at yourself and what you've created as well and kind of be in appreciation for that too mm-hmm so have you, tra- so you've traveled right around the world to conventions and that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. I've traveled and lived um, abroad. And so I worked in New York for quite a period of time and I traveled around the States a little bit and I've worked in the UK and Oxford um, mm-hmm. as well. So, yeah. Now, so did you, when you did that, were you um, actually living there and working in a shop or were you just guest spotting or what did you do? Well, I lived in New York sort of on and off for maybe, I uh, probably came to about nine months a year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I lived there and, and worked in a studio there. So that was really cool um, and got to experience New York. So that was exciting. It's so different to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I was brought up in the countryside. So um, being in a huge city was amazing. And yeah. Um, yeah, that was an experience itself. So I've been really fortunate to be able to travel with my work. And I have um, the m- majority of my clients um, are actually in the States. And so it was really cool working there because I 
would have people travel from all kinds of places and even their journeys to getting there to the you know to get the tattoo was so exciting and so cool to hear about and mm-hmm. I got to do like a marriage proposal like a stencil of you know I mean that was so that was cool so I've, I've had lots of really exciting things so a lot of people got engaged on their trips it was yeah it was Aww. really cool well so why yeah. do you why so do you think nice to be like a part of it yeah why do you think clients choose to work with you I guess they're drawn to their art and to the you know to my work to what I'm creating so mm-hmm. I feel like the people that I get to tattoo as well like I really sort of seem to gel with and everyone's really like I have the most beautiful clients I'm so lucky oh that's great wow um, I love that and so you actually started I just your feel like because of the work and the nature of what you're putting out there people are attracted to that <laughs> Yeah, um, so no, true. just saying that people are, I feel like are attracted to, you know, people who are on a similar wavelength, I think, and who are interested in similar things, which is quite cool. Yeah, that kind of leaves room for everybody, you know, in this industry to attract the kind of clients they want to work with, you know. Some people love the the more girly stuff or swirly or painterly or, you know, neo-traditional. So it's nice that there's room for everybody. Yeah, it's cool. It's just, I mean, it's art, you know, there's, there's something for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so subjective, right? <laughs> so um, can you share what you've noticed about women and minorities getting into the tattoo industry? Well, I mean, when I first started, I was probably, I was definitely one of the few women in the, where I lived um, mm-hmm. who was tattooing. But I never came up against any sort of issues or or anything with that. And I don't, in New Zealand, I don't feel as though, you know, minorities getting into the tattoo industry also is, I, I, ha- I haven't seen it personally as an issue. I've, I've worked with so many different people and from different backgrounds. And it's, I feel like New Zealand is pretty well inclusive, to be honest. Nice. So, Lucky. That's great. I love hearing that. Um, I haven't got much to, to, to share on that in like a negative light because I do feel like, yeah, further out and yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I love our little country. It's really, really nice. That's great. I really, it's really nice to actually hear people who've had a really good experience and, you know, have been able to start out and, and have more of a open and diverse situation right off the bat. Yeah, I feel really, like, fortunate, and I was, you know, I I felt sort of welcomed in, and um, no, I was, yeah, really yeah, lucky. That's, that's really lucky. So, so have you ever uh, apprenticed anybody? No. <laughs> no, you're not ready for that. I feel like I know what I'm doing, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so you opened a uh, tattoo studio yourself, a private studio? Yeah, so um, my partner and I have opened our little tattoo studio, so Lovecraft Atelier, and so we've already just opened um, in the midst of everything going on in the world right now. Oh, really? Uh, but that's been really exciting, and yeah, that's been really exciting, and I am I feel really blessed to be able to open that with him, and um, it's it's really cool to create a space that's ours and I don't think I would have probably taken that step myself just yet if it was just me um so I feel yeah really fortunate to be able to do that with him and how how long have you been open um uh, we've been open maybe three months oh wow so Such a short pretty time. fresh oh, wow. yeah 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 and he's so and he's a tattoo right artist in the middle of well. everything yeah Yes, he's an incredible tattooist. Yeah. He's oh, wow, artist. great. Oh, and so you, and you guys work together now. <laughs> that must be interesting to have to work with your partner like that. Yeah. Yeah, so um been sort of working together uh, for the last maybe oof, 10 months anyway. Um yeah. we've been sort of traveling and working in New Zealand prior to opening the shop um and so yeah no that's it's really cool it's nice to work with him and um obviously (laughs) you you do need still your own space but to to be able to all kind of talk with each other and yeah I I have um my best friend also so she's 
our receptionist. She's been doing uh, my bookings and things for the last few years. So she's moved down with us and it's really nice to have like a little family um, at the shop. Yeah, that's great. It's nice to have a private studio too. And and I mean, obviously right now with the whole COVID situation, um, it's been, in, you know, not as many walk-ins and <laughs> all of that with people pretty much everywhere. No, so we 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 both work by appointment only, mm-hmm. um, which is really nice. So we we book ahead of time and then know what's coming up and can kind of you know start generating ideas and thinking about things for our clients and um, have a bit of a plan for you know <laughs> when we're going to have some time off and and things <laughs> like that. So. <laughs> So what do you think it takes um, to build a solid tattoo career, in your opinion? A big question. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Lots of dedication. Uh, I think, yeah, dedication to the art and to the craft and just not giving up is so important. Um, So many things, like, will set you back. And I can't, like, even count how many times, you know, I cried starting out and that Mm -hmm. had such a, like, a, a hard time just with myself and um but yeah I think it's just really it's really crucial to just if you know if you want something and you really desire it with your heart to really keep working with it and and to just not yeah not give up um and find things that inspire you and that bring you joy and then you know you're able to work with those things and other people will find inspiration and joy in them too so I think it's creating, you know, art's an extension of ourselves. So it's creating things that are beautiful to put out there in the world and and for other people, you know, to see the love that's in them as well. I like that approach that uh, you're, you're kind of like infusing, infusing your art with the joy that's in your life. And you, you, I really feel like you can see that just looking at your art. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's just important to take care of yourself as well when you know when you're when you're learning and when you're starting out. And I I really myself pushed myself too far, honestly, and um, I I hurt myself by doing that. So mm-hmm. it's really important to just like know your limits and to 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 find those and to learn and uh, to maybe listen to your friends when they're telling you that you know you, you need to actually be able to relax sometimes and, <laughs> and do other things. So. Yeah, I think, you know, I've learned a lot from from that. So tattooing, you know, has given me so much. And then also I let it take from me too. Um, mm. And so it's, it's yeah, it gives you greater boundaries and and um, just knowing, knowing what you can do, what you're capable of and, and what's healthy as well. So what do you think being gentle in this industry means? being gentle yeah so I think it's normal to it's it's nice to be able to maybe kind of try and step into their shoes or you know to have another perspective on what it might be like for somebody coming in to get their tattoo especially you know if it's their first one and I think having a really like personal approach or you know being able to talk to people and being able to have you know conversational skills and um, being approachable and being kind and just being genuine Mm -hmm. um goes a long (laughs) long long way so I think just being gentle and you know it's important to just be compassionate and um you know to let them know about the experience and what to expect and and what's possible and what you're capable of and what you feel you know you can achieve for people as well I mean, there's some things that I just don't tattoo because my heart's not in it. And so I think it's about yeah. also, you know, just knowing what you're invested in. And because I only want to, you know, create things that I am invested in because then I'm going to give the best job to my client. Um, so it's, I think, just having that as well with you. Can you share with us um, maybe one of the more interesting stories you've had with one of your clients? Tattoo studios can be intimidating. And one of the more interesting stories I've had with a client, gosh. (laughs) Or Um, weird or strange or anything. I mean, I, I'm, I get great clients that I really chill with. I haven't really had anyone who's uh, done anything too crazy. 
How do you think that beginner tattoo artists can shift into receiving more money for their artwork over time? I guess that's the thing, isn't it? Over time. Um, so for me personally, uh, because I paint and as well, I've been able to create artwork and, and prints and things like that. And it just, I think the more you tattoo and the better you get at tattooing and then, you know, it naturally progresses from there. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been fortunate to be able to, you know, paint and share that and, um, sell prints of my work and and just to be able to tattoo and progress through with that yeah yeah I mean a... there's all sorts of ways you can you know yeah. do more I just I'm quite happy with with oh, what I'm doing I don't yeah. I'm not out to to make you know a whole lot <laughs> a whole lot of money I mean you can do all sorts of things things are creative you are right right and as you as you've progressed over the time how long did you say you've been tattooing I've been tattooing for nine years. Nine years, wow. And um, as you've progressed through the years, you've raised your prices over time and you just decide at, at which point, you know, uh, compared to like other tattoo shops and what they're charging and other artists and stuff, is that kind of how you figured out what to charge? Yeah. Um, um, so what kind, of, uh, <laughs> what kind of tattoo equipment are you using now and like inks and that kind of thing? And so I'm using the FKNs machines and uh, the Zion from them. So I really love that. Um, I learned pretty early on kind of what I liked in a machine and, and what I, how I ran them and what worked for me. So mm -hmm. I kind of just keep an eye out for those things when there's machines that are coming out or ones that are adjustable or um, yeah. So that was, that's what I'm using at the moment. And uh, I, and using eternal ink a lot of the time. So I really love um, the color palettes and, and the, you know, um, sets and things as well. So I found a lot of different colors that have become a part of kind of, I guess, my own palette. And, yeah, your um, own palette. That I use, yeah. Do you have any I advice for new just, people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. New people starting yeah, out? Yeah, I think it's important to realize that it takes a lot of time and um, really wanting it and committing yourself to to going for it. So, Michaela, you have a little free gift for our audience. Do you want to tell us about that? That's all right. No, I was just um, going to say that the the digital artwork that I created was actually one while I was traveling around um, through the states, and then I jumped over to the UK. And while I was there, I sort of finished it. So it was one from from my little travels. Um, oh, so nice. Yeah. So inspired yeah. by your travels. I love that. Well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you being here. And especially with all these technical difficulties, um, you are wonderful and you very, very inspiring to me. I appreciate it. That's all right. It was just part of it. So Great. <laughs> thank you for having me. To our listeners, your next interview will be delivered to your inbox. And don't forget, you have access for a full seven days after each interview is released to listen. I look forward to joining you in our next session. Until then, be feisty, stay kind, and get creative. <laughs>